డబల్ సంపన్న సంపన్న Thank you, Mr. Presiding Member. Uh, we are debating, sir, today uh, proclamation made by His Excellency the President pertaining to an essential public service relating to fuel, including petroleum products and gas. and very that picture really, really, really relating to that uh, particular matter in this country sir we have had trade unions for a long period of time and i think uh, uh, trade unions are a vital and important uh, component of a democratic society the rights of workers uh, uh, need to be protected at all points of time and i think trade unions play a very important role in ensuring the right that the rights of workers are protected and in that sense uh, we have always respected trade unions we have always given our support to trade unions to ensure that uh, workers rights are protected uh, trade unions also sometimes engage in uh, trade union action for national reasons for reasons which they claim uh, are related to the country's future i think uh, the action currently contemplated by the trade unions relating to petroleum and gas was on account of certain decisions taken by government uh, in respect of uh, certain proposed projects uh, in the south of this country and in the east of this country and the trade unions seem to think that uh, uh, that should not be allowed that, that should be resisted and they they had uh, initiated some trade union action uh, to cripple certain essential services related to gas petroleum oil and so on and the president's proclamation is to ensure that these services are available uh, to the people of this country without any impediment Uh, the honorable dinesh gurudev when he spoke in the morning sir in fact he refer referred to me uh, and called upon me to be supportive of democracy he in fact uh, requested that elections be held in this country soon not local government elections or provincial elections but elections to the national legislature should be held soon and he said that this government must go home this has been a consistent uh, objective of the joint opposition and they have been consistently demanding that the government must be crippled uh, that the government uh, must be toppled and that the government uh, must be prevented from functioning as a government Uh, in keeping with the democratic verdicts of this uh, of the people of this country i think sir we cannot forget the fact that there were elections in 2015 there was first, first the presidential election in january 2015 um, mr mahindra rajapaksa who had served as president for two terms sought a third term by even amending the country's constitution to enable him to seek a third term and the people very politely said to him that he would not be elected president of the country he was defeated by president maithri pala sirisena quite convincingly in fact president maithri pala sirisena defeated him more convincingly then when uh, mr mahindra rajapaksa was elected president 
uh, in 2005 for the first time. So the verdict of the people was that they would not have Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa as president. And uh, in terms of our constitution and the democratic verdict of the people, that's a verdict which has to be respected for a certain period of uh, time. And no one is entitled to demand that that verdict be abrogated or that that verdict be toppled or disregarded. Uh, that would be undemocratic. What followed on that? After the presidential election, we had the parliament election in August 2015. And uh, Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa was projected by the uh, parties in the joint opposition now and by the UPFA uh, as the country's uh, prime ministerial candidate. The country was aware that the choice was between Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, who then functioned as prime minister of this country, uh, would be appointed by prime minister of this, uh, as prime minister of this country by President Maithi Palasirisena on his election as president. He was prime minister until the elections were called. And the country was aware that the contest was between prime minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, who was the candidate of the UPFA for the position of Prime Minister. And the people once again delivered their verdict. The people once again came to the conclusion that they would not elect Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa as their Prime Minister, and they re rejected uh, that claim that he may be Prime Minister. You can't deny these facts. The UNP 106 seats, the joint opposition, the UPFA won 95 seats. The different 11 seats. There were six seats won by the JVP. There were 16 seats won by the TNA, which were not supportive of Mahindra Rajapaksa. They were all against him. And despite his effort to become prime minister, after his failure to be president, after his failure to be elected as president, there was a verdict to the people that he could not be Prime Minister and that they would prefer Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe to continue as Prime Minister. So what is the support you want me to give you? There is a verdict to the people. A clear verdict to the people, both at the presidential election and at the Prime Ministerial election, that Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa is neither acceptable to the best president nor as Prime Minister. That's a very clear democratic verdict. You can't get over that. You can't topple governments as you like. <clears throat> if you are able to topple governments as you like, despite the verdicts of the people, and despite the provisions of the Constitution stating that government directors are entitled to continue to function for a certain period of time, unless they are toppled in keeping with the Constitution on the basis of a no confident vote in the House, or something like that. You can't topple government through strikes. You can't topple government through conspiracies. You can't topple governments by persuading essential services to break down. And that is what this proclamation made by the president seeks to prevent. Trying to topple governments by uh, getting essential services to break, to break down, I think, says, so utterly, thoroughly undemocratic and cannot be accepted. And in the context of the opposition's demand consistently and continuously that his government must be toppled, one is inclined to think that is, that is joint opposition, which is headed by Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, is responsible for a number of the disturbances that are taking place in this country which is impeding and interfering with governance. People are entitled to, to the benefits of proper governance by a, government, by a government elected by them. I think I can also caution this government. You must have the spine to govern. You must make decisions that are necessary. 
The country, the economy is in a very serious state. The country is deep, deep in debt. The country must be redeemed from this position. If this country is to be redeemed from this position, government must take bold steps. Government must take bold decisions. And government must be in a position to implement those decisions. I think it is your failure to make bold decisions and your failure to implement bold decisions that encourages your opposition to become difficult. You should demonstrate that you are governing efficiently and effectively. That is your duty. And if you do that, I think you will be in a, in a much better position uh, to silence the government, silence the joint opposition, and make sure that we are able to carry on. I'm happy Field Marshal Fonseca is here. I referred to you when I spoke on the, uh, uh, on, on, a, uh, on a matter in Parliament a couple of days ago, when there was an adjournment motion in regard to the missing persons. There's an effort being made in this country to show that uh, this government is about to betray the armed forces in this country. We don't agree with that. There is no effort on the part of anybody to betray the armed forces. The soldiers who fought the war, fought the war on behalf of the government, on the decision of the government, as per the direction of the government. There may have been soldiers, there were soldiers, who, can, who committed certain crimes. They may be responsible for various matters, but that is not applicable to all the soldiers. You can't say that every single soldier who fought in the war was a war criminal or that is guilty of some offense. But if soldiers are responsible of contraventions, violations of the law, violations, violations of international humanitarian law, violations of the domestic laws in this country, they certainly must be dealt with. There is no question about it. But we all saw the way in which Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca, whom you claimed as being the best army commander in the whole world, was treated after the presidential election in 2005, 2010. You were in prison clothes. We saw you. We felt sorry for you. You were humiliated. You were insulted. You were the army commander. You, you won the war for the government, but you're treated like dirt. You were charged on frivolous matters, on matters that should never have constituted the basis for a proper charge against anyone. Leave aside the former army commander. And you were convicted. You were deprived of your title. That is the way you were treated. How can we accept that these persons who treated you in that way are concerned genuinely about war heroes or about soldiers? Are they not really trying to provoke tension in this country? To promote communalism in this country? To promote, promote, promote division in this country? To prevent reconciliation in this country? Which is fundamental for the future of this country? National question needs to be resolved. Wonderful That's leader. the responsibility of the government. Wonderful leader. One we must unite more. all the people in this country One and bring them more. together. I'm finishing, sir. Right. How can that be done? If you are going to promote communalism, if you are going to promote division, if you are going to promote rancor, you treat Field Marshal Salat Ponteka like dirt and claim to be very concerned about our soldiers, about your soldiers. Who will believe this? How can you be believed? So I think sir, this type of thing must stop. We must all work towards the future of this country. This government has been directed to be in power. Please govern. Please don't dilly dally. Take bold decisions and implement them and show that you can govern. Thank you, sir. Thank you.